Hi, I'm Josh, and I'm putting up a 30 by 72 foot high tunnel from Zimmerman's High Tunnels. The one I'm putting up has five foot sidewalls and just a straight truss in the arch. And it's, uh, I'm doing the wooden end walls on it. And it's got three rows of purlins with six foot spacing on the arches. So uh, there's a lot of variations of these high tunnels. So if yours is different than this one, uh, some of the measurements are gonna be uh, different also. So now I'm building my end walls. So first what I did is I uh, hung my end wall post brackets on the clamps that were already there and in the right spots. Next, I put a string up from the outside of both the end wall posts. When you're putting your end wall posts in, you want to dig them in or plant them in the ground between 12 and 18 inches. I'm putting mine um, right in between at 15 inches. So before you screw these on with the inch and a half leg bolts, you want to make sure it's flush with the side of the sidewall arch. Then we're going to put one leg bolt in to start with. Then I'm going to Make sure that it's right beside the string and level this way. Then I'm just going to put a little bit of dirt around it and pack that down just to hold it there because I'm going to come later and fill the hole with cement or concrete. And then I'm going to put the rest of the leg bolts in up here. So this end wall post is done for now. I'm going to put the rest of them in likewise, and then I'm going to follow with my bottom board, and then we'll put the concrete in around the posts. Then I'm going to frame my, my doors and build the doors. Lots of different ways that you can finish your end walls. I'm putting in larger doors on both ends for ventilation. Also, um, there's different materials you can use to finish your end walls or close them in with. I'm just using the plastic with 2x4 uh, door frames. So on your bottom boards or baseboards of your end walls, you want to screw the one side to this board that's on the side wall, and then you can just screw them onto your other uprights. Uh, because I'm having swinging doors that are going to open to the outside, I had to make this one flush. So if, depending on your door, if you have an overhead or anything else, you can just run this right past. I had to um, set this in so that my doors could open. Also, uh, one thing to remember when you're getting screws, uh, remember to get screws that are designed for treated lumber or decks. So on my end walls, I'm having a larger entry door and up on top I'm putting a ventilation door or window and then I'm having in the middle two large swinging doors, um, double doors. Once you get your end wall built and framed in we're ready to start pouring the concrete in the holes. You want your cement to be soft enough to fall down into the holes good, but uh, firm enough that you can still form it. It also helps if you tap on the post a little bit to get it all settled in. Also, if you want to extend the life of your uh, posts a little bit where they go into the ground, you can form the cement so that it's slanting away from the post so the water sheds away from the post and it will keep the water off your post therefore making it last a lot longer. 
and I'm just going to do this for all of my posts, the wood ones that are in the ground, and then for good measure if you want, you can also dig around the four corner posts and put concrete around those also. Then I'm going to build the frames for my doors. So now I have my end walls and my doors all built and I'm ready to put the plastic on the end walls. Now on the doors you can build them any way you'd like. A lot of people just use a garage door or other doors that you can find. Um, I didn't have anything laying around so um, for me the cheapest way um, was just to build them and put a, cover them with plastic. Um, also we're going to do the end wall plastic first because it's easier to put on from inside when you're going over the arch in the peak. Also your roof plastic will more likely wear out first so when you're going to replace it in several years you may not have to do your end wall plastic so that can just stay on there and then you can just replace your roof plastic when it comes to that. So the first step for installing the plastic is rolling it out and measuring um, the first piece will be 75 feet that's going to be your roof plastic so you mark that uh, you can mark it on either both sides so that you can cut it straighter and we're going to cut that and then the next plastic um, you can either divide in half or you can go um, 16 or 17 feet just, just so that you have enough for the end walls so the next measurement, um, I'm going to go at 16 feet, and that's going to be one end wall piece. And then from this cut, I'm going to measure another 16 feet, and then you'll have your two end wall pieces of plastic and your roof plastic. First, we're going to tape any, any sharp edges or bolts that might be sticking out. So once you have your plastic cut um, for the end walls, you can unfold it and pull it up over the side of the hoop house. I'm using a tractor and a bucket um, to reach the top. Um, you can also use larger step ladders if you want. Um, we want to leave about 8 inches of a tail on the bottom just to kind of shed the water away from your lumber and I guess um, it might help keep the rodents out. Then we're going to start with the batten tape on the bottom first um, and use, I'm using roofing nails, about an about a inch and a quarter should work. There are different options. Uh, one of them is <clears throat> the nails with the plastic washers. Um, you can use those, um, that works good. Or if you want to make it easier to replace the plastic uh, in the future you can use screws with the plastic washers on also and that way you can take the screws out making it a little easier when you're replacing the plastic. The first two we want about four inches apart and then six inches after that. So we want to have someone keeping it tight across the bottom and you do want to do it when it's not going to be too windy. Also when you're doing the plastic the best temperature is around 60 degrees um, if it's hotter, then you may not want to pull it quite so tight because as it cools off and contracts, it'll get too tight in the winter. So if it's summertime, just don't make it quite as tight. Uh, otherwise, <clears throat> if you can do it around 60 degrees, that's great. So now I have the batten tape all the way along the bottom. And we just put a roofing nail in every six inches. And then I, for good measure, I put a staple in between each nail also. Then we're going to go up top and we're going to pull the plastic tight and put in one foot pieces of wiggle wire which um, you want to have cut before this point. So we're going to uh, put those on about every uh, three to four feet and that will hold the sidewall plastic or the end wall plastic um, temporarily until you get the roof plastic on. Also before you put the plastic on you want to make sure that uh, any sharp points or something that might cause the plastic to rub and wear through, um, you can tape those. Uh, like on the purlins, 
um, joints or if there's any screws. So we want to pull the plastic over the top and down on the sides as we put the one foot pieces of wiggle wire in every three feet about. So after you have the wiggle wire in, we are going to leave about six inches on the top and cut the remaining or the extra plastic off um, this side of the arch. A scissors um, usually works better than a knife for this. So as you get um, down to the ends while you're cutting it off, you can also cut the this, the piece that goes around the sidewall um, side off a little extra long and if you want you can wrap it around the back and nail it on both sides of the 2x4 or you can roll it <clears throat> so that there's a thicker spot to nail it to and, and just have the rolled part on the front of the 2x4 like that if you want also. Then we are going to pull it tight from the sides and just start nailing all of the braces and uprights um, on the side of the wall to hold the plastic on. Now for attaching the plastic, um, now that we have the bottom piece of batten tape on and then we have it pulled up tight and the one foot pieces of wiggle wire in the arch now holding it that way tight, now we're going to start um, putting the tape um, in the center and then we're going to have people pulling out on the outsides to keep it tight um, this way as we work our way out putting the batten tape on the uprights um, working towards the outside. I just use the 2x4 um, frame but you can go with 4x4s if you want to make it a little sturdier. Now for attaching the batten tape um, since I'm using the roofing nails every six inches and going with a staple in between um, it does work pretty well. I found out to um, use the staples first, that's a lot easier to get the batten tape on and tight, and then you can come along later and put the roughing nails on. Another option for holding the plastic onto the end wall boards is just to use a slat or a thin board, and you can just uh, nail that on with nails and that holds the plastic very well also. So now I have all the batten tape um, nailed and stapled onto the doors and the door frames and all the uprights. Now all I have to do is cut in between the doors and on the tops and the doors will swing open and shut and be finished and this side will be done. I'm not going to cut on this side, the plastic will just bend as you open and shut the door. So once I get these cut out, this side will be done and we'll move on to the next side. Now after I cut the plastic on the top and down the middle here, um, these doors are ready to open. And now that we have the end wall plastic on both ends, we are ready to put the roof plastic on. Now for pulling the roof plastic on we're going to use four ropes evenly spaced across the hoop house. So first we want to start by throwing the ropes over the hoop house and then we're going to tie the ropes onto the plastic. Now in the plastic first we're going to roll it out and then we're going to find <clears throat> one edge and we're going to take four tennis balls spaced evenly across and we're going to kind of make a ball about six inches from either side and you're going to take one of the strings that you have thrown over and we're going to tie that on. That way when you have them all tied on you can have four people on the other side and pull this over. Just to 
help the plastic over the edge a little bit and without letting it snag on stuff um, I'm taping the joints on the C-channel because they're sometimes a little bit sharp so I'm just putting a piece of tape over anything that's sharp so as the plastic pulls over uh, I won't get snagged or torn on anything and now we are ready to pull the plastic over the roof And now, uh, just before we do anything else, we're going to take and stake the four corners in case any wind or anything starts up. We don't want it to blow off. So we're going to put uh, two more tennis balls on this side and pull the corners, all four corners tight. And we'll have people holding it in the middle. So we have all four corners staked now. Now we have two people on that side pulling it tight and two people over here. We're going to put uh, one piece of wiggle wire on the peak of the arch on this side to hold it for us while we start on the sides and putting the wiggle wire in. So we have one piece of wiggle wire here and now we're going to start in the center on each side and work our way out putting the wiggle wire in. So now we have the ends held and the both sides held. We have two people over there holding that side and this side we are going to start in the center arch and put a piece of wiggle wire in once again you want to make sure it's a calm day when you do this so your plastic doesn't uh, blow away on you. After we get this piece in, we're going to go to the other side and put a piece in also. Then on both sides, we're going to work our way toward the side that the two people are pulling it tight on the top. <clears throat> and we're going to go across and put the wiggle wire in and have the plastic tight this way. Then we're going to start in that direction and have two people on the top of that arch also pulling that way. And we will put the wiggle wire in going in that direction so all the sides will be on. Also we want to go underneath and the duct tape that we put on we can cut and just leave it there that way the joints will be taped and we'll put the wiggle wire in and that'll all hold it there and nothing will be sharp or get cut. Now we have the wiggle wire in on, started on the other side also and we have two people on each side working our way in the same direction pulling it tight and across and putting the wiggle wire in until we get to the end and then like I said we're going to start back in the middle where we started originally and go in the other direction next. Now that we have the wiggle wire on the sides coming to this end, we are going to start in the peak and put the wiggle wire on the end walls to hold it uh, tight this way. So we're going to go right over the one foot pieces of wiggle wire that are holding the end wall plastic. And if we want, we can take a tech screw with a washer and wherever it's doubled up to make sure it stays where you have the one foot piece and the four foot piece going over it, you can put a tech screw in there to hold the two sets of wiggle wire um, down. So just put a washer on a tech screw and that'll hold wherever it's double. So now that it's held tight, we're gonna start in the peak and go down both sides, putting the wiggle wire on the end wall.
once you have the wiggle wire all, all on the ends, um, you're going to cut the plastic off, the extra stuff, about four inches from where it's attached. So this end is finished now. Now we are going to go back to the middle of the hoop house on both sides where we started from and we're going to work our way in the other direction with two people up on the end wall arch pulling it in that direction as we work our way that way. And we will get to that end and finish that end the same and our roof plastic will be on.